Uh, yeah, welcome. Uh, on behalf of Berlinale Talents, uh, we welcome you to this afternoon session, Dead or Alive, um, passing away on screen. And I would like to introduce you to my dear colleague, Dorothy Wenner. She is uh, not only a delegate for India and Africa for the festival for the Berlinale, she is also a writer, director, curator, um, and uh, initiator of uh, many, many initiatives. So thank you for hosting uh, this session for the moderation uh, this afternoon. And you will introduce you also to the two guests here. So enjoy the session. Thank you very much, Christine. Thank you all for coming. Dead or alive is quite a big topic. Uh, and so I will give you a little bit of an idea what we are doing and what we have planned and foreseen. That is, we have two lady directors who have some things in common. That is, they have made feature films that deal with death and dying, fear of death in a very, very creative way. And the idea, uh, what we are doing, is um, giving a very brief introduction only. Camila Adini from uh, Indonesia. She has a film this year in Generation, Seen and Unseen. We will introduce the film and also her work in general a little bit uh, later. And Lucille Hatsila Lovovic from France. Uh, she has made a number of films that touching this, uh, which are touching the subject. Um, and the film we are going to focus on is called Evolution. So this is something we talk about in more detail a little later. But we thought in order to get into the right mood, um, we start with a non-film related question. And that is childhood memories. I asked both of them to prepare childhood memories, because uh, this might be an introduction into what we are later on talking about, what cinema can talk about, what usually is a taboo. This is also how it falls in the bigger programming space of Berlinale talents this year. But I had asked both of them to prepare thinking about a childhood memory when they were afraid of death or were touching fear and how they remember not being able to talk about it. And I don't know who of you would like to start. Okay, can you take it? <laughs> so is it working? Yeah. So yeah, no, it makes me think of a kind of a still strong memories about maybe I was seven years old and in my basement there were rats and there was also poison for rats and um, my parents, of course, explained me that I really, really shouldn't use this, really not touch this poison, but it was like candy, it was pink. I remember very well these pink little <laughs> things and I was so attracted to that and I somehow, I believed my parents and at the same time I couldn't believe that I could die by eating this and I was very much attracted to the idea of dying and also there is a strange connection with the rats. I was thinking, if this can kill a rat, can it kill me myself? Would I become a rat, something else? I don't know. <laughs> so it opened a kind of box, this, uh, this possibility of, yeah, dying, but in a very mysterious and nice way through this pink candy for rats. <laughs> and, and were you able to talk about this or was it all in your head? It was totally in my head because, of course, if my I, I knew that it was forbidden to touch this poison thing, so I touched them. Of course, I put them in my pockets. I didn't go until the point to put it in my mouth, but it was a very it was very exciting to have this um, secret in my pockets and this forbidden thing. And of course, I couldn't talk because it was like the big thing forbidden was doing that, and that was a at the end, I was obedient. But. <laughs> Camila, would you tell us what you did naughty things or when you were very much afraid of things that you didn't talk about to your friends, your parents, siblings? 
I don't know if it's something that really fear me or anything because I think uh, if I'm thinking about when you give me the question and I'm thinking about my childhood, about fear or about death, um, I kind of see, oh, culturally, I kind of see that differently. I mean, in my childhood, um, because our family is very attracted into in the um, cultural thing. My father travels a lot and then he brings stories. And if you know in Indonesia, death is one of the biggest celebration in cultural um, events in Indonesia. And that's actually what's very attracts me as well. I mean, when someone is dead, usually it's a big festive in a way. I mean, we have a lot of events and um, people kind of, of course, set, uh, celebrating it in a, in a different way. And there are many stories about this, uh, um, about funeral in Indonesia in such a big event, like in, in Bali, um, it's a big, big event when someone is dead and they have to cremate. And in Toraja, they, when someone is dead, you usually uh, the people is actually in your living room like a mummy for years until you can bury them and then you will have such a big celebration when you're finally um, able to bury them. And these stories is actually, the thing is very attracts me. I mean, and I see that is is, uh, is something that that is always death and life is something that always um, natural. I mean, it's it's just life. Uh, it's like a, a cycle. So, the, but I have. Uh, I remember when I kid when I was a kid. The question is like, when when life is the cycle, then. How do you say goodbye? I, I remember I have the question like, how do you actually say goodbye when, 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 when someone is dead? Like, is it finished? Is it there? Or is it, there will be another life? And how do you actually say goodbye to it? So that kind of, that kind of thing that, is that um, I remember I like very curious about, yeah, about this thing. So yeah. But it's not fear, but it's something, it's always in between fear and excitement and curiosity. Mm -hmm. And we all, culturally, we always portray it in that way. You know. So um, what we have foreseen next is to do a little bit more of an introduction to both our guests with the films and an expert uh, excerpt from the film. Uh, Camila, for your background, uh, she lives in Jakarta. Um, she has been to film school in Melbourne, in Australia. And uh, before entering the world of festivals and where we are here now, you were also very active in environmental uh, filmmaking, which I think shows and re is reflected also in your work, your love for nature and animals that we see a lot of in your film. Uh, she has made a film before uh, the one we are going to see now, an expert from, uh, that is The Mirror Never Lies, which also deals with death and dying in a different way. Uh, in the scene we are going to show you now, it's a story about twins, Tantra and Tantri, two year, uh, 10 year old twins. They live in Bali. Tantra is the boy who is about to die. So the story is told very much from the perspective of Tantri, who is the girl, and who has to come to terms that her brother is dying. She knows about it when she listens to her mother and the doctor telling that Tantra is going to die very soon. So uh, the film is about the journey of acceptance that her brother is going. And we are showing one excerpt in which uh, Pakis, who has difficulties in sleeping, because she's so upset about what is happening, that she goes out at night. And the scene we are going to show you is half an hour into the film where Pakis uh, is, uh, where she's dancing to the moon. Can we have like the first excerpt, please? Yeah. 
So we choose this uh, sequence because it has like a lot of elements in which we can see that you are using symbols, that you are using uh, music, that you are using a very bodily sensation that you want us to be able to feel as audience. I would like you to uh, explain to us how you conceived the story. So how did you put all this into writing or uh, how, how did you prepare this room in which uh, the two siblings embark, not voluntarily, but because of the death uh, approaching? If you can tell us which elements you have used, which are maybe very typical of the Balinese culture, which you referred to earlier. Um, uh, first thing, first, this film is a film about process of someone um, um, accepting death. And, but the film itself also a process um, that is, it's, it took a long time for me to, to, to actually conceive everything, put everything together in, 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 the, same, in the same room. Um, the journey has been around six years to put everything together. But um, my creative process is always like when I have an idea um, and in this film, I, want, I know that I want to talk about um, Indonesian human, like how the question was at the, at the very beginning, the question like who, I, how, who we are actually, how we connect to each other and how we connect to, to the universe. And, and I know that Indonesian people, we are very holistic kind of people. And, and, and when I heard about the sin and unseen that um, it's actually a Balinese philosophy, it's called Sakala Niskala, and in English it's actually the seen and unseen, um, who's, which, which is talking about um, how we, um, how Balinese live together um, in harmony uh, with something that they can see and also something that they cannot see. Of course, you can translate it to anything, and it's very um, attractive to me to actually have another perspective and interpretation of what it is. And it's actually um, portrayed a lot of, I think, who I am talking about life and death and how we actually live seeing it naturally like that. And um, when I have that idea, I try to put it, I always have to see, like, where is if if the idea is a seed like where i should put the seed in in which soil i, sh I choose to put the seed in and um in bali talking about life and death it's it's something that you you meet every day the talking about the seen and unseen is something that that you find in everyday life and i think a balinese culture can give a lot to this seed that I want to talk about. They can give the water, uh, exact water and, and exact wind and the heat and everything. But for me, the process is like how to find this good water for it, how to find the good heat for it and the temperature for it. And so the process is like collecting everything that is um, suitable for for the idea and it's it's such a, a long process like you find something you try to put it in and then it doesn't work and then you you try another thing that's why the film if you see from that exact clip it's also very complex even for for a couple minutes there's a lot of symbols there's a lot of things only to actually show one feeling like one mood um, one feeling so and then after the idea of showing the holistic life, uh, the cycle of life, I know that Balinese, they have their own calendar of a moon. Like their calendar is based on the cycle of the moon actually. And, and, and the moon is also a very magical in, in, in Indonesia, especially for Balinese. And I want to use that power, that power of the moon to, to, to talk about uh, other power that you don't you don't know actually like you embrace a, a power that you never understand you just observe it like that 
Um, so the moon become a very important symbol of 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 the film uh, of the film, um, the power of the moon, the feeling of the moon, and and even the color when the full moon is in, like it's it's night, but it's a uh, it's not a very dark night, so you can see something very little. That's why the film also very dark. So I want to have that that feeling in between. Uh, because we're talking about life and death, I want to have the feeling in between, like in between day and night, in bit, um, like in the down feeling, something like that, uh, that I want to portray because Tantri is having this in between feeling, like when they're together and not together, she has to have that, that, that feeling in between. And there are other things, animals and Ghosts, ghost, um, in Bali they actually live together with with uh, the unseen world, um, and they believe that everything is around them. So um, I need to have that as well. And Tantri, uh, the main of the character is um, the name of a princess in Bali. Uh, this it's from a Balinese fable talking about a princess who talking a story about animals to a prince who cannot sleep. So she, she's telling stories about animals. But in this film, I know that, that um, stories, dialogue come with a movement. So the movement is a dialogue and, uh, and that's why she's a, a Tantri is a girl who's telling her feeling from a movement of, of uh, animals. Yeah, I think there's a lot of things. I don't know how confused it is the film. So maybe we can talk, you can ask, I can answer. So yeah. yeah, we just wanted to give you a basic idea of what the mood of the film is like. So this is not a Q&A about a film yes. that some of you may have seen, others might want to go see. But I think what became very clear is that you open up a zone that is in the space between life and death where you locate your film. And this is also what brings me to Lucille, whose film Evolution um, is a film that Lucille made uh, with a 10 years gap almost after she made a film, Innocence, before in the year 2005. Um, she's based in, in France, in, um, in, in Paris, right? Uh, in Paris. She grew up in Morocco and uh, what I found very interesting is that you also studied art history. Uh, so sometimes you get influence from what you did before you entered the film world, like in your case it was the World Wildlife Fund and in your case it's the art history background, which I think one can find in your films, your interest or uh, passion for this. Uh, she uh, made a debut feature film, La Bouche de Jean-Pierre, Mimi in English. And then um, after the film Innocence in 2005, which was centering very much of a coming of age story from a female perspective, the film we are focusing on, Evolution, uh, premiered and won the special prize in San Sebastian in 2015. Uh, that is a film uh, which centers about male puberty. The main character is Nicolas, and he comes to a place in the very beginning of the film, which is an island which exists. It's Lanzarote, right? Yeah, yeah Lanzarote, but it's not at all the geographical Lanzarote. Lucille has created a complete new zone. So in your case, it's very much geographically clear that it's Bali and in your case it's Lanzarote because it's not clear, I think. Yeah, it's nowhere, it's an island somewhere. <laughs> so we have two islands as another uh, analogy between both your approaches. Uh, but in, in your film, it's a film that is not so much addressed to a young audience. It's a film for an adult audience, whereas uh, Camila's film is playing in generation and is also for children. In your case, 
you are using also horror film elements. But before we are going to have you explain a little bit how you constructed this zone, let's see a clip. So it's uh, rather early in the film, only two minutes uh, into the film where we see uh, Nicola arriving on the island. And please, can we first see um, the clip of evolution, please? So I think this uh, few minutes give you an idea of how Nicola enters into this world with us underwater, then arriving on the island. I would like um, to ask you, Lucille, when you were thinking of this film to take place in this zone, uh, how, how did you compose it? What was there first? Which elements were important for you? Uh, well, in fact, it's uh, not obvious from that extract, but it, in fact, how a bit of a, a big part of the film is happening in a hospital, and in fact, the hospital came first, and it was very much about a boy and a teenage boy who has to go to the hospital because he had something in the belly that was bothering him, and the mother brings him to the hospital. So it was very much linked to the hospital, to the idea of having something in the belly that has to be, and it has to be operated. And also it was linked to the mother, because it was a mother who brought the boy to the hospital, and she had a, some kind of a complicity with the people at the hospital. Uh, and then at some point I realized where sh should this story happen, and I thought that it should happen on the seaside. So the seaside came in second time. In fact, it became the real subject somehow. And I realized, because for me, the film is, it is, of course, about death. There is a possibility, the threat of death, because this boy might die. But also, it's so much for me about birth. And uh, it's about like re remembering your own birth somehow or escaping to the to being bur being yeah born again and so you can kind of uh, run you can escape to the mother world <laughs> somehow so so for me birth and death was very linked and it was also I wanted really of course to have a very, on the, a, a child. It was not so much about a boy. I thought it was more interesting with a boy because a bit less obvious if it had been a girl. But um, it's a boy who is going to give birth and I thought it was more striking and more interesting. And maybe it's a way to remember your own birth somehow and to go through the, this process and to, to this thread of death to evolved into some something else. Um, this, the depiction of death is something that is like as old as the history of cinema. So we have like all kinds of, uh, be, because it's such a strong emotion. If you two could say where in the process of making the film, you found this was a very liberating area to touch upon and where you found this is something where I don't want to enter. When we are talking, let's use the word zone now that we have kind of defined it. Where did you find it was very attractive for you to go there and where did you found it was, oh, this is something that becomes dangerous for the film? For me, it was, there was an image that was so strong and attractive to me and so shocking was the, 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 the dead child, the body of a dead child. And it's not, and I think in a very um, mystery, I mean, complex way, I was attracted to see this image and to make this happen in the film. And it's not the image of the, the boy we see under the, under the water because we hardly see it. But at some point you see really a dead boy. And I think it was, yeah, both shocking and attractive because it's so not normal than a 
child died, and I wanted to create a kind of yes zone place where I could go to this place, uh, being protected by the film, <laughs> by the, the the narration, the narration of the visual of the sounds and characters even. So I don't know if it's very clear what I'm saying, but. <laughs> Well, by the way, uh, please interfere if you think we get stuck in a direction which... Uh, yes, please. You just said that you were protected by the film. Uh, you were protected by the film. How does this work? Okay. Um, you said you felt protected by the film and I would... Uh, uh, I would be interested, what, what was there first, like is there first the, the idea to go to a certain uh, taboo, uh, to a certain topic and then you create the characters around it uh, using the protection of the film and uh, yeah, how your process was there? I think I wanted to come back to a, a memory of my childhood and it was not so much about death, in fact it was more about becoming a teenager at, when I was 10 or oh, 11, I, maybe 10, I went to the hospital for the first time of my life because of I had appendicitis, so <laughs> a very ordinary thing. But because it was the first time I go there and it was so abnormal, this idea of being seen and touched by unknown adults and they even were going to open my belly. And a bit as I told about this thing with the <laughs> poison for the rats, I thought it was so attractive for me to go to the hospital, to this adult world where something so strong and strange was going to happen to me. I knew that I was not going to die, but maybe I would. Maybe the operation would not was success, will not be successful or whatever. So I think it made a kind of complex thing with that that stay on inside me and I wanted to express this feeling and it has also to do with this idea of giving birth because I was at, an, at some age where I might go into per, uh, puberty and maybe have my periods and, and so it was all linked and, um, and then I thought it's a very taboo place, very with complex, with birth, death, sex some, in some way, not like uh, a person, but sex in a very... Um, uh, Bodily, maybe. Yeah, Experience. maybe, yeah, exactly. So, and I thought that I needed some ritual to go there, some kind of, uh, and for me, making a film, and I mean, it was both the story, there is a kind of... Uh, rituals into the f in, in, in the film, like the way the nurses, the doctors, all this, there is a, a certain kind of ceremony. And I link that also to the hospital and to the fact that at the hospital you have procedures very strict and you have the students, you have, maybe it's some kind of religious thing <laughs> linked to that. And I needed that to go to that place, to that zone. And also making the film was a way to make a ritual around it, to make a sanctuary thing, to go to that place. Do you think um, a film about death, bodily transformation, or you know, the zone, let's put it like this, needs to be completely differently addressed when you are talking to an adult audience or to a younger audience? Like, your film is for 12 plus, right? No, or K plus, 6 plus. 6 plus, yeah. even. So, even 6 plus. Yeah, so, I mean, that is... Uh... Yeah. Yeah, um, Yeah. it's it's interesting to talk about uh, that, actually, because in the process, that's also what's, uh, what I didn't think about, actually. I mean, um, I love to, to see... Um, I think when when I'm thinking of my childhood, sometimes when something feelings have coming up to me, the hardest part is how to express. Like we don't know how to express clearly about certain things uh, because we we know that it's always been taught. So some things just um, sometimes the expression is just 
just like that um, come out can be very differently can can be very wrong can be exactly but we don't know actually how how to express a certain thing so this is what 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 interesting for me like i want to see from children point of view like how they express something that is they not really sure about actually um, and the other thing that I know, if we, when we lost someone, there's some people that I lost as well when, when I was a kid. When we lost someone, I know that that, the, that certain person is leaving something in us. So that kind of thing that I want to, I want to portray, like what is in you that that person actually left. Um, um, and so everything is supposed to be from their point of view. But of course, because the thought, the idea of it is something that is very critical and, and, and very complex, the film has become, become, become very heavy in a way because it's a lot of thoughts. And it's my thoughts about, about, about that. So when I make it, actually, I didn't, I didn't think that it's actually, f even when I see it from, I, s I try to answer my question from children's point of view, but I don't know if, it, if it's actually an answer for, for children. <laughs> um, so that's what's interesting um, when, when actually the film seen by, by very young, very, very young, for young um, audience, and it's totally different in Indonesia because in Indonesia my movie usually rated um, 14 plus. Oh, 14 plus. Mm -hmm. Even the characters is um, 10, and it's always 14 plus because they think it's maybe too dark for 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 kids, and um, and that's why when when the first time Berlinale Generation accepted for K plus, I was like. Okay, this is gonna be a new experience. I want to know the younger kids what they think about it uh, because I don't really um, a plan that it's actually for younger. But um, the amazing thing is that we we sort of like sometimes the the question is something that uh, bringing up more questions in my head, and it's very interesting how 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 they see it. So, but yeah, I, uh, I never planned it actually to, 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 to be seen for, for children. I just use their perspective to see things. Um, I want to know what's in their mind, yeah. This would bring me also to, uh, to ask you, Lucille, uh, Evolution has been traveling all over the world uh, as, a f as a film, and you tackling a taboo, because in everyday life we hardly talk about death and dying unless someone just died and there was just a funeral in the immediate circle of friends and family. But if we have uh, a film like yours that is bringing the taboo to the screen, uh, I'm wondering if you can share with us some reactions that surprised you. Like what did your film do to audiences? Mm -hmm. um, maybe the first thing I would like to say was the first reaction and it was not uh, on the film, it was on the script and it was from the, the protagonist, the boy who was going to play Nicholas. He was maybe not so young as he seems to be, he was 12, 12 years old and he read the script and I thought, mm, and what I, well, I, I was mainly thinking of the dark elements or the horror or all that. And he was not interested at all in that. He was in what he saw in in the script was the thing with the girl. He said, "Am I going? Who is going to be the girl I'm going to kiss?" And for him, that was the life. He was not interested by the death. He was interested by the life. That was interesting. But then, it wasn't the script. It was different experience. But I wanted to say that because I thought maybe he understand better the film than <laughs> I'm going to do. Uh, I think that the thing that people usually react strongly to is this idea of a boy giving birth to a child and this idea of, um, yeah, that, that it's more that than the thing about death, but because I've, 
It's strange now I think so. I, I think that I, I had almost never had questions about death. It was more about, for instance, why are you so much afraid of pregnancy that you create all this nightmare with a boy having a baby <laughs> in a very strange and scary way and abnormal way. So um, I think the taboo is both about hurting and killing a child somehow, but then we are not expressing directly that, but more through this idea that it was happening to a boy when with a girl it would have been a little bit more, not normal, but uh, already seen somehow. So um, I'm trying to remember if people, uh, and anyway, I think people are really understand that it's a circle, it's, it's, a, it's about becoming a teenager and dying as a child to be able to become something else, to, to become, uh, in this fantasy world, it's maybe a, a hybrid person, but it's a human being, but it's also about just becoming a teenager that you have to die you know, in order to become that. <laughs> You were mentioning your script. Uh, this would be a question to both of you because uh, maybe you get an idea already what you have described or where you, both your films take place is um, a very emotional journey when you see it. Um, what, what was your experience as filmmaker? Was it very hard to find, to make people interested in saying, I want to enter this zone to make this film about when it comes to pitching, finding finances, finding people who were ready to go with you in retrospect when you made these films. Was that, because language of course plays an important part, but it's only one part next to the depiction of nature, creation of an entirely new world. Did you find it very difficult to, get people on board for making these films? Uh, yes, I mean, for the scene and unseen, I actually go through almost everything. I mean, like, um, we started, uh, we got into many project markets and I, I was in the uh, Stina Foundation residency. I was in uh, Venice Bridge Production Market and we apply for some fundings as well. And um, there's a test, we enter the Tides at Band production lab. That's actually very hard for this film because um, this film is from the idea, it's very, f uh, it's all about the visualization that um, I want to, I want to portray. And um, if you, if you see the film, everything is uh, contains in the, in the movement and then it's, uh, it's all, it's not only in the story. It's, uh, it's, a, it's about the production design and it's about the directing, it's about the acting and the, and the mood, especially the colors and the roughness of the, of the, of the cinematography, for example. And and those kind of things people cannot see when we are in yeah. a pro in, in, in a project market, especially in script lab and in something like that. That's actually the um, worst hardest journey that that I have to explain. And sometimes people are like, what do you want? What what is actually the story? And what uh, how, I I don't get like how you're going to to portray it, visualize it. So. It's been it's been um, hard to 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 explain that, and especially when you talk about the script, then because it's it's talking about a, a boy tantra, the the younger brother is getting sick, and then the sister um, something is open in her her mind, accepting this um, reality, and she has something uh, visualization, feelings, and everything around her to accept that uh, she going, she's going to lose her brother. And story-wise, uh, people tend to want to change the film into like um, the, 
the sister wants to give something before his last moment as she will um, make her world his world better and it's it, it's it will go that way like um, and that's actually not what uh, what kind of film i want what i'm thinking of so yeah so but it the process is we i have to go through that process to know exactly what i want i mean sometimes that kind of op opinion you want to absorb it and you want to think about it so you know that i don't know you want it or you don't want it um so th that's why i said to get into this moment it's it's been a, a long process of like having changing ideas to know exactly um what i want but um, this film also funded by uh, several things. Uh, we got the Hubert Pauls Fund, the Doha Film Institute Fund, and Asia Pacific Screen Awards. So for that, um, what we do is we have we make several um, teaser like this kind of thing that I want I want to portray. I know that uh, this is not easy to fund. That's why from the beginning I know that one thing that I need to keep in the production is in the uh, independency. Like we need to keep um, that for for we can create um, as much as as we think about i don't know if it works or not um, on another project yeah. yeah i don't know it will it works or not actually like it scares me to death as well <laughs> <laughs> it scares me a lot but yeah i need to 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 go with my guts in the end yeah yeah i think many of you might have had similar experiences when you want to make a film that you know everyone is waiting for a film that hasn't been made before uh, and you cannot say, oh, I want to make a film that is X, Y, Z. How to maintain uh, the strength and power of saying, well, I believe in my vision. Teaser is one, so not only relying on the script. How was it for you, Lucille? You took 10 years. Uh, how, yeah. how, how <laughs> did you... Yeah it, was very, yeah, it was a very difficult process, the financement of a film, of course, because... I think it's for many reasons, but uh, I think it's was because it's a, um, it's a kind of hybrid film. It's a, well for me, it's not a problem, but for the financement, it was because was it a genre film, uh, horror, sci-fi, something like that, and at the same time, it's a it's a art house film, and it was um, uh, finance like an art house film, not a commercial film, but for these people, usually I think the element of genre, what they call genre, like the horror or the sci-fi, was something not serious, I think. And, 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 and so, the, and I think even if I didn't really got this comment directly, I think that the fact that it was uh, about children being kind of victims in the film and the, like horrible thing happened to the children in the film it was something too shocking for for them so and the, in this process this kind of uh, financing from art house commissions and usually you have to have a consensus to get the money and it was not a consensual film but um, and it was very hard for me to understand how to how I could help <laughs> And, uh, and for instance, one thing was very helpful was when we found, at some point we did the scouting in these uh, islands, Lanzarote, the Canary Islands, and it was so much the place we needed and it was there, it, it was already existing and it made it uh, somehow real. So we had like the photos from the scouting and it was help people to imagine, because again, as you said, the film is not so much, I mean, it's, there is a narration, but it's not so much about the story. It's about feeling emotion. It was about the, how it was, the, yeah, the, the place, the, the, yeah, the, the, the visual and the sound also elements. So people don't, are not able to, to understand it through a script or even through the way you are talking about it so yeah so for instance the scouting helped a lot too so they thought oh yeah that could be another world that already exists and then so 
So when, when you recall the writing process, was that like, maybe you can share with us, because I think, you know, you can on the one hand tell the success story, and then I did this, and then everything was so easy and well. But what we really learn from when we are talking amongst filmmakers is when, you know, you're down to your ground and you're so depressed because another commission said, no, 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 we don't want to have this. Can you maybe share with us one downfall that made you turn into a direction where you kept the energy, where you kept what was your vision of the film alive? Is, is there anything maybe that you could... Well, there are two things in my case. I mean, this is my second feature, and, and second feature is always um, uh, very scary. <laughs> and, um, and this film um, was, at the beginning, the, 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 the script is not like, it's more narrative, it's more complex, and I took a lot of, a lot of advice. I, took a lot of people's advice and I really want to make it work and 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 are there certain points that I I I know it's gonna be um, a big budget and then and, and also it's I need because I, I'm going to need a lot of characters a lot of a lot of settings a lot of things and I I know that it's the direction, the narrativity is not that I actually I want to, I want to focus on it since the idea. So there are times when we actu I actually don't want to see the script <laughs> at all for months. I don't know if it's work. I don't know if it's actually f script for me or not. And so there are times and it's quite a long time, maybe more than six months. I don't, I don't want to touch it. And and also at that time, I wrote this script before I get married. So that time, I really fascinated to to tell something uh, from children' point of view, but something that actually not close to them, like death and then night. It's something that it's not close to them, and people usually don't put this theme to them. But then I get married, and I have two kids now, and then I see. <laughs> Children feel them differently than before. And I was like, oh my God, this is very scary, even more scary than before. And, uh, <laughs> and is this uh, really, I want to make film about that for kids? I, I, do my kids want to see this? I am, I'm like, I suddenly I'm very uh, distanced with the, with the story. It's a big distance. And, uh, but this film already got into got some support, and I know that I have to finish this. I have to make this film. Uh, this is an idea I cannot run off. Um, so I have to go through all the process. So um, there are certain points I know that I need. I need to shoot this. Uh, I need to find again why I want to make this. What was the idea at the beginning, and how do I want to portray it? So at that time, I have to shrink many things in, in, in the film so I can make it more realistic. So I can make it, um, I know that I can shoot with this budget. I know how to find the money if it's that much. So we shrink a lot of things. I focus on the two characters. I focus on just a couple of settings. And I bring more feelings into the mother because now at, at this time it's relate to me as much, um, and and yeah, see the death is not more into fascinating kind of curiosity in a way, but something that it's kind of life that is it's something natural back to the culture that I was. I was thinking about before that life, and that is something natural. Even Balinese think that. After death, there is another life. So they don't think that that is the end. There is another life, there is reincarnation. So this kind of feeling that I want to also portray in the film and, and, and it's become more realistic in a way for me um, to, to express. And yeah, and then uh, suddenly I'm going on, you shoot, I like it, then the editing, 
okay, I'm stressful again. <laughs> and there's still time in the editing. I don't want to touch the film again. So there's... So there's you're saying <laughs> uh, if you're making a difficult <laughs> film, it's also about finding the right rhythm that you have to obey to dependently on when money comes in, when you find finances, but also for yourself to decide this is now the right moment to a project that got stuck at yes. this and that moment yes. to say, well, maybe it's after three weeks, maybe it's after three years yes. that I'm looking at it again and I can change it and now it's the right time for yep. doing this. Lucille, you must have had, like 10 years is really, I mean, most of you would have this experience that it can be very, very painful to wait. 10 years, though, is a very long time. Yeah, I just, I didn't spend 10 years really only thinking about evolution. <laughs> but uh, no, at the beginning it was, I mean, I begin with a very kind of intimate story, very about mood and atmosphere and feelings and about this child who is a afraid of maybe dying or transform into something else and um, and it was yeah so it was difficult to find the money and the people were always asking but what is I mean give us more explanations and I really wanted to keep the, a certain kind of mystery because I thought that the film was talking about this mystery. Death is mysterious and attractive and, and birth and giving birth is so mysterious and attractive too. And I wanted to have both these two elements and I wanted to keep a kind of mystery and also for me it was more again an intimate story. It was an inner world of Nicolas and not like really a genre film where you have a it was not a comment of a society or it was and I really thought that giving too much explanations or giving explanation would would destroy the film and I could see that in other films where people are pushed to give more explanation and in fact I don't think the audience really needs the explanation it's more the people who gives money are so afraid, not so sure about what they understand. They want to understand everything. And I think for me, it's exciting when you don't understand everything, when you, and this is what makes me want to make a film, for instance, is that there is something I don't really understand what is it about. So I have to dig into this zone and to go to that zone to make, to find out. And it's a process of making a film. And then maybe at the end, when I will see the film on screen, I will, and I, when I will see also the, the reaction of the audience, I will understand what I have done, where I, what I was talking about. But this is not something you are supposed to say to the people who gives you money. You're supposed to give <laughs> some answers. <laughs> so during all these years, or sometimes, because of course I was not, I didn't work on that project for the <laughs> every year. But with my co-writer, we try to not really maybe give more explanation, but more elements. So year after year, I mean, at some point the film was growing up and we, it was a very pleas pleasant thing to go back to this island and to imagine how this world was working, if the rules and, and many, many things that at the end are not in the film, but to, to build a real world around. And we had at the end a lot of explanation for ourselves, for why this was happening that way, etc. And it helps to give a kind of coherence, uh, but maybe you don't understand why, but maybe I hope you have a feeling that there is something coherent in this world. And even if you don't have all the keys, but we build up the, <laughs> the rules. And, um, and I was afraid that at some point I lose my interest because I would really understand what it was going to be about and I will not need to do the film. But still there is something that was not explainable that I would never be able to explain to anyone. It was something not rational about the fear the boy has. So this may be what keeps the film, the project alive. And uh, at the end, we couldn't have enough money so to do what was written. And I had to cut like maybe a third part of the script. And it was like during this, the process of the writing through these years, it was like 
zooming out, so we have more, the picture was bigger, so you could see more, you could maybe understand more, but also it was opening other questions, other doors, and then it was a never-ending process somehow, but at the end, because I had to cut, then it was again like to go to, to do a zoom-in, so it's not like in the usual sci-fi film, for instance, where you have the whole picture. No, now we are really in, inside the story with, with the boy all the time, and we don't know more than the boy. And, and I thought for me it was very important because that was the, what the embryo of a film was. <laughs> I, I think this is uh, a very, very nice advice uh, and I think also very important for a lot of filmmaking and maybe it's not by coincidence that you have entered the zone because after all we are human beings and nobody of us does know what is happening afterwards. So we are making this up and there is no script doctor or you know commissioning editor or so and so who says well but you have to explain what is there because you, your both your films are going where nobody of us has ever been before so to give the encouragement to say well if you have something that you feel an emotional bond even you can't explain i think this is a really lovely advice uh, and i don't know if maybe some of you have uh, questions to our filmmakers here at this moment to what they've been explaining or want to know more about elements of their work style. Yes, please. Can you wait for the... Here. Uh, but whoever has the microphone first. Hello. Um, I wanted to ask both of you have um, children featured as your central characters and I wanted to ask how, um, how children and especially the views which children have of their bodies and out of their bodies attracts you in filmmaking and how you try to present that aesthetically in your, in your work. If you understand the question. <laughs> It's, it's about working with children, if I got you right, and how you reflected this yeah. in your films. The self-perception, no, is that? Working with children, but like the, the perception of children, mm -hmm. because often like children have a different bodily perception. They, uh, they um, perceive the world differently. And if that is something that especially attracts you to children or how you try to um, to do that in the aesthetics of your movie, like the camera and how it moves in the, in the space and how you see the children's bodies? Um, I try to answer that question. I mean, um, yeah, there are certain things. Um, the, the hardest part of working with uh, children while you actually have such a complex theme and, uh, and a, it's that um, I think that there are there are things, what you do is like, there are things that um, they should know, but also there are things that they shouldn't understand as much about the film. I don't like tell them everything my about the film because of course um, it's not that they're not gonna understand, but I want to keep the natural, natural and the naive and the in a very, in a very subtle, delicate way. I, I don't want them to think um, in the film. So there are things that actually uh, we play a lot with with something um, they know, but also something that they know and keep mysterious even for them while they act on it. And um, and this thing that they should know is. I believe that it should be coming from them. So I treat them as a sort of like a, my also co-writer in a way. So there are a lot of things that actually I want it to come from them. Like I want them to, to, to be comfortable with what they do. Sometimes the idea also come from, from the kids itself. Um, so when it's something that they know, it should be thing that re they really know and it should be coming from them. That they're, but that's what I play when I play around, when I work with children and kids. I would also want things also mysterious for them that they, they don't need to understand. But 
I don't know if they have questions or anything, but I want to keep it mysterious. Yeah. It's funny because, um, so in most of my film, it's with children. And uh, in fact, I, I realize that they really don't care about the story. Uh, they care about some elements. Um, for instance, well, the, the, in Evolution, the boy was not so young, so it was a bit different. So he read the script because he wanted so, not because I asked him to read it. And he was interested in the part that was I mean, familiar for him and interesting for him, and it was a girl. It was not about all this thing uh, we, at the hospital and all that. It was for him. It was kind of silly, and I was very happy. It was, it was like that. So that's why also we could do the film with him because he was not scared by the things that the character was scared. Mm -hmm. So we could feel at ease with him about that, and uh, and he was maybe scared about. Yeah, kissing the girl, and this is something I never thought of before. And I thought, yeah, maybe it was going to be the first time he's going to kiss a girl, uh, and a big one, <laughs> because it's not as a child. I mean, we didn't call it a kiss, we call it, uh, because at the end, well, I'm revealing everything for the one who hasn't seen the film. Uh, so the, the girl who is not totally human, she can breathe under the, under the water, so she takes the boy in her arm and she gives him oxygen from a, through the mouth, like a mermaid somehow, and of course it's a kind of kiss, but we didn't call it a kiss, so, so we, not to try to embarrass him or something. Um, and no, I think, I think it's interesting because they don't ask why, uh, opposite to the people who give the money, they don't <laughs> never ask why. Yeah, they that's just, true, actually. Yeah, they, don't, they just they don't like it to do it or not. Sometimes yeah. they don't want to do something and you it's very mysterious why they don't want to do it and you have to <laughs> understand why. So it's a very different perspective and I think it's very fresh and very gives you a lot of pleasure doing films with children for that reason. Even if you go to dark things, sometimes it's also because we all played as children with very dark fantasies sometimes, as we said about, um, uh, we like to, to, I think a lot of children like to, 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 to think and to play with death and with, I mean, element of link to that. And for instance, in a, another film I did before, Innocence, there is a coffin in which there is a little girl and all the, ad many adults told me, oh, it's going to be very, very um, scary for the girl to be in the coffin, on the contrary, and they were fighting to be the one in the coffin <laughs> because it was so exciting to be in a coffin, no? And it was uh, for, for play, they, they know, they just play, it's very generally so. Oh, yeah. if, if I may add something, I, I think in different as the, the films are that we are tackling here, uh, it's that one similarity is that both filmmakers make a lot of the bits and pieces of information that children turn into something else. So it's as if a door is opening through, uh, you know, not really knowing and not really having an answer and sometimes being lied to because information is kept to you from, from them and not using that as a difficulty but as the opening up of a narrative space. But here was another question. Uh, Uh, hello, uh, thanks for your films and your information. Um, I'm interested in how do you work uh, out the aesthetics for the film? What kind of material did you inspire? Uh, how was nature involved in that? Also? Okay. Um, um, the, the aesthetic actually also comes... Um, comes with the process as well. I mean, um, I I know I know that I love traveling and I love to find I find uh, new cultures and learn about them and see see both from their perspective and having my own interpretation on it. But aesthetically, um, 
um, when I, it comes to nature, I'd like to know like how how do I want to to like how do I want to embrace this this nature? Like if if you want to talk, for example, my my first film when you want to talk about about um, ocean, the sea, like who who is the 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 storytellers of it? Like who. From whose perspective you you want to see it, and how do you, how do they want to to feel it? Like what what do they feel about that scenery, about that nature? Um, and in my first film, it, the film it talks about talks about Bajanese people. So Bajanese is the sea wanderer of Indonesia. They used to 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 live in a boat and then move from one place to another but now they bring they have uh, they build their own village above the water so they they actually live together with the sea they even call the sea as a brother so from this perspective i want to i want to people to feel to feel the the ocean like i want them to be very close and can feel every little things um, on it so aesthetically, um, then it comes to other things like I want it to to be very subtle, very static in a way. Sometimes um, it can be look like a postcard, but that a lot of questions when we see it. So those kind of things, and it's very different than than um, the scene and unseen. The scene and unseen, I know that nature. Uh, takes a big place to to as a, uh, to the Balinese culture. Like they even their movement, the Balinese dancing, they come from nature, uh, from uh, from animals, movement, from everything. So um, I want to know the perspective on how how they actually use nature to how nature can involve in their their everyday life. That's why I said the cycle of the moon and the power of the moon become, become very important in this case because nature can come to that, that close. Maybe the balance, they don't realize it as much. I mean, that's something that me as an outsider may be fascinated about. I mean, but um, we just had a premiere in, in Bali last, uh, last week and and from this film, they think like, oh yeah, I remember now how it's actually important for us, and and maybe I visualize it um, as much. So, I oh, in my films, I always talk about relation, and I always keen to know during the process uh, how this relation happens. Like, what's how is this happen? What what is the place that can put this relation is in like what is the social background what's the culture background what is the feeling background of uh, this relation and that's what i want to i want to portray so and i think in every relation nature always come uh, like always take a big part in some way and that's what i always trying to look up to um, yeah but it's a big process yeah. I think both of you have used a lot of nature, nature de depiction, which is realistic, but through your lens, it becomes also a kind of a very specific way. Like in your, both of you are using islands, so surrounded by water, and water and underwater is something you are very fascinated by, apparently. Yeah, yeah it's very cinematic. It's really because it has different... Um, mood, different atmosphere uh, under the water. It can be you have the the ballad of the uh, weeds can be so beautiful and slow and peaceful, and then suddenly you are at the surface, and then you have the the strength of the waves. And uh, I like this opposition, and I like the fact that it's both attractive, beautiful, and could be scary. Can kill you, and can you also? You can be part of it also with a lot of pleasure and um, and I'm very inspired by places, by locations and so this island for instance was really a, a gift uh, because there is different kind of mood. It was, it was a, 
It's an island where they used, they had an eruption. There is a volcano. It's a volcanic island, and they had an eruption two centuries ago, and so the whole uh, island is covered with lava. Uh, it's black very much, and then you have this uh, black sand, and uh, and it was so, and this little white village, and and it's very simple, very minimalist and very kind of empty. So you can really focus on, let's say, each element that are there. And I, mm. maybe for me, I related also that to the, to the childhood when you can't see everything, but you focus on some details. And this is a bit what I'm trying to build in the film to pick up a few details and to, to make a world out of it somehow. And then, yeah, when in a place like Lanzarote, it was very, yeah, it was a gift to find this place because it gives you a lot. It was both soft and hard, peaceful and strong and harsh. And I tried to express that in the film. So uh, we have prepared uh, scenes that I think are very important to touch before we come to an end of this session, and that is uh, when you as a filmmaker dare to enter a zone, uh, be it death-related, somebody's dying, or you as a filmmaker make your spectator, your audience, entering a world that you construct, like in the way of uh, uh, the, uh, Lucille did it for, for evolution, I think it is very crucial before you start filming that you know what kind of a transformation maybe your main character or also the audience is going to, and whether you lead the audience out in that way to the other side of the zone where, you know, it's more uncertain than it was before, or whether you have some kind of a consolation like in your film where Tantre is making kind of, she, she accepts in the end that her brother will be dying and that death is a major turning point in real life as it is in movies. Would you like to tell us a little bit how you approach this necessity of a transformation and where it leads to, or uh, what is your opinion about this? Yeah, for, for me it was important that um, it's a bit like also a kind of exploration film. <laughs> even if it's in this very confined world. So at some point, Nicolas begin to question this world and to, yeah, to ask questions really and to explore, to go at the night, to see what the women are doing, etc. And, and he, at some, and by the end of a film, he, he get some answers. He knows what is happening there and is able to escape from it's yeah he has to escape from that to survive and he find an ally to to do that and he, he has to he has i mean he has, becomes more maybe a teenager just that and then he, he has grown enough to 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 leave this world which is maybe the the world of the mothers or <laughs> i don't know and uh, and he ha can be strong or, or big enough to to go to in some other place, which is maybe not so pleasant. Maybe it's another nightmare there. Who knows? Or maybe it's not. But it's a, yeah, it's an exploration. And then at some point, is too too big or too old to stay there. He has to leave. But you you kept some of the secrets, so the secret is not completely explain so you, you you kept in the transformation something that was part of uh, an experience that he might not completely yeah. but, but I think this is what happened to human being I'm now more than 50 years old and I think there is things I still don't understand and and I still want to tell story about children because I think that the same thing that goes with you all your it begins there. Maybe this is a moment where you begin to be conscious about that, or you begin to question that. And I don't. And during your life, you have different answers to that. But just uh, one. I mean, these answers are just 
part of the truth, not all the truth, and I think it's, it's, um, uh, you know, I think that there is, you can't reveal all the secrets, you have to keep some secrets, you have to keep some mystery, you, and there is some very deep thing, the more you, yeah, deep thing that you, you have to approach through different access and to sometimes you find a bit of explanation but it's just a bit of it and, and you can't have the whole picture and I think this is what is so exciting about life that you somehow you never get the whole picture and voila. <laughs> well yeah that's uh, that's actually true I mean when, when when the question is about transform transformation then I have to ask as well as much like how big it's how much we transform like in because like what what Lucille said that um, maybe things doesn't always have an answer that things doesn't really transform as much I mean there's there's always questions after questions and there are things that we're always looking for and in the scene and unseen that's one of the thing that I want to know I don't know as mu how much Tantri is actually transformed after the whole thing but it's a process and it's a reality that is actually coming um, and what is reality like um, that's why if you if you see the film um, I play a lot like with um, if um, there's dreams, but there is not dreams. But what kind of dreams we don't know. And I, uh, as a visual, we talk a lot about this. Like how how are we going to portray this these dreams? But um, it's not a dream. It's a reality. Sometimes sometimes it's something when we are facing something, it's just so happen like that. Like you think that it's gonna transform you. You think that it's gonna be better. You think, but it's it's. It's not, it's just another pace and then you go towards to another thing and and it's it's reality and reality is a very surreal thing I think and, and and this this kind of thing that I want I want to say in in this film a cycle mm -hmm. that it's never end. It's just like that. Yes, please. I would like to know, Lucille, uh, if the genre choice came naturally um, in the process or if you decided beforehand that you want to work with horror and that kind of thing. I think it comes very naturally because also I was very, um, I'm very attracted to this genre as a uh, audience <laughs> myself. I love to, when, especially when I was uh, a bit younger, than, a bit uh, older than Nicolas in the film, but I love to go to see uh, horror, sci-fi, or fantasy films. So I thought it was natural to, if I was talking about this boy, to have to bring this imagination around him, this imaginary, this genre elements, because it seems to me very natural to that he would think of, uh, yeah, the, this idea of. Uh, I mean, I was going to say something that is not anymore in the film <laughs> because I cut it, but it was like about the stars in the sky, the star of fish, the stars in the sea and and the strangeness of uh, adults, of this woman. And then, uh, yeah, I think it was very, for me, very natural to, to, to use these elements. And I never really thought that it could be a problem for the financement and to put it in, not as a label I would put on it, but just to work these elements this uh, just to keep it uh, around not really to make them so explicit so uh, for instance I didn't give an answer to what these women are um, there's just a few elements and I think it's better to have like th there is holes that you have to and you have to make the link yourself <laughs> and I think it's more exciting and it's and if you are an audience that is used to go to see a genre film like that, then you all read books, sci-fi books, you can find very easily the answers somehow, so. I think uh, it's time to give a big thank you to Camila and Lucille for thank you. sharing <laughs> how you have protected 
the secrets that your films are about and that you told us also very much about you know how important it is to to fight for your own uh, little space within this world that sometimes is like a little bit rough when it comes to the commercial side uh, ending this session i would like to ask you when the scene and the unseen is screening again tomorrow is it on the 23rd 23rd so in yeah. case anyone wants to see the scene and the unseen, that's 23rd. And Lucille, I forgot to mention in the introduction, has a short film, De Natura, also in Generation, uh, which will be screened tomorrow. Can you, uh, I don't, sorry, I should it's have looked tomorrow up. tomorrow morning at uh, 9.30. It's a bit early for adults, <laughs> I think. <laughs> But, and the following day, it's again in the morning at 10 or 10.30. And also there is a screening for Talent Campus. It's uh, on Thursday afternoon. It's a bit more human time for you. Uh, I think, I'm not so sure of the time, maybe two o'clock or four o'clock, so you have to check. It's another program. But it was very fun, very pleasant to have a children audience here. And Thank you again one more time, and thank you also for your interest, and enjoy the rest of the Berlinale Tuesday. Thank you very much.